I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that military vehicles can get pretty big. They've got a lot to achieve and a lot to do. But some are so very big that they make the military vehicles that you thought were big look like children's toys by comparison. We're talking about absolute monsters of the military vehicle world. These are the 20 largest military transport aircrafts in the world. Number 20, Air Force One. Air Force One is more than just a plane, it's an iconic symbol like the White House. It's basically the president's flying headquarters. Whether in times of peace or when there is a threat of conflict, it takes the commander-in-chief wherever they need to go. So this is how the US president travels. But here's something you might not know. The term Air Force One is a bit more versatile than you'd think. It's a general call sign for any Air Force aircraft carrying the president at that moment. If the president is on a personal or private plane, the call sign shifts to Executive One. That said, these days, when people say Air Force One, they're often referring to the two specific Boeing 747-200Bs commonly used by the president, whether they're aboard or not. Inside, Air Force One is like a luxury hotel in the sky, weighing in at approximately 362,000 800 kilograms. It has about 370 square meters of space distributed over three levels. It features a bedroom, bathroom, spacious office, and a conference room that doubles as an airborne oval office. There's even a medical center with an operating room, and a doctor is always part of the flight crew. The kitchen is a marvel too, capable of whipping up 2,000 meals during a single flight and serving up to 100 people at once. As for its history, the pair of planes we know as Air Force One today were first put into service during President George H.W. Bush's time in the 1990s. And it's worth noting, they're set to be replaced in the near future. If you give us a like and subscribe to the channel, I promise not to use my secret CIA connections to have Air Force One come and spy on your house. Number 19, Xi'an Y-20. The Y-20, China's debut homegrown heavy military transport plane, was engineered for the People's Liberation Army Air Force by Xi'an Aircraft Industry. It is China's largest self-made strategic airlifter. The versatile plane is designed to transport both personnel and hefty equipment during military operations, but it's also equipped for humanitarian aid and peacekeeping missions. It can be configured for specialized roles like anti-submarine warfare, airborne early warning and control, and refueling tasks. The first prototype of the Xi'an Y-20 took its maiden flight in January 2013 at Shanxi Yanliang Aviation Base, and it was performing well. A second prototype followed suit, taking to the skies in December of the same year. The aircraft was then publicly displayed at the 2014 China International Aviation and Aerospace Exhibition in Zhuhai. The Y-20 is known by its T-tail design and high-mounted horizontal surfaces on the vertical stabilizer. Its middle fuselage section is hinged for adaptability. The high-set wings, moderately swept back, have three slots on the trailing edges of their flaps, and beneath each wing is a pair of engine nacelles. The Y-20 prototypes were powered by four D30KP2 turbofan engines. However, the production models have the domestically produced WS-20 engines, China's most potent aircraft engine to date. Number 18, Antonov AN-124 Ruslan. The AN-124 is a mammoth in the world of cargo planes, specifically designed to haul heavy and oversized cargo. If you're looking for a cargo charter with ample space, drive-on loading ramps, and a lot of built-in freight handling gear, this might be the one for you. The design of the AN-124 was drafted in 1971, and construction facilities for it began to pop up in 1973. The plane first took to the skies in December 1982 and made its public debut at the Paris Air Show in 1985. Since its introduction in 1986, 55 AN-124s have been built, and currently, 26 civilian versions are in operation. 
Various models exist, such as the AN124-100 and the AN124-100M-150, each with its own specs. The monster is engineered to carry staggering amounts of cargo, up to 150,000 kilograms, depending on the model, over vast distances. Its landing gear is also made to support these enormous weights. The plane has a two-deck layout. The upper deck houses the cockpit, a relief crew area, and an 88-seat passenger cabin, while the cargo area occupies the lower deck. The flight deck accommodates six crew members, the pilot, co-pilot, two flight engineers, a navigator, and a comms officer. Pilots say the AN-124 is surprisingly easy to control for a plane of its size. This plane gave the Soviet Union some bragging rights during the Cold War. One interesting mission happened in April 2005, when an AN-124 transported the obelisk of Aksum from Rome back to Ethiopia. Number 17. Lockheed Martin C-5M Super Galaxy Lockheed Martin made the C-5M Super Galaxy as an upgraded version of the older C-5. The goal was to extend the service life of the C-5 Galaxy fleet until at least 2040, all under the supervision of the U.S. Air Force. The upgrade process to morph the C-5 into the Super Galaxy version had two major phases. Lockheed Martin finished updating 52 C-5 planes by 2017. This batch included 49 C-5Bs, two C-5Cs, and a single C-5A. As of December 2013, 16 upgraded C-5M planes had been delivered to customers. The journey began in June 2006, when the first of three C-5M test planes had its maiden flight. It was then handed over to the USAF in December 2008 for further testing and evaluation. The second and third test planes followed, taking their initial flights in November 2006 and March 2007. Finally, in September 2010, and the first production C-5M was airborne for its first test flight. By October of the same year, it was ready for operational tests and assessments. Lockheed Martin and the USAF wrapped up their joint acceptance flight in October 2012. The C-5M Super Galaxy isn't just a spruced up version of its predecessor. It comes with over 70 improvements and requires less upkeep per flight hour. When it comes to dimensions, the plane measures 67.91 meters in length, has a height of 19.84 meters, and a wingspan of 75.53 meters. Its maximum takeoff weight clocks in at 381,018 kilograms, while the maximum operating weight stands at 181,437 kilograms. The aircraft can carry up to 150,819 kilograms of fuel and 129,274 kilograms of cargo. Number 16, KC-10 Extender. The KC-10 Extender is an air-to-air -air refueling tanker, mainly for the U.S. military and other coalition forces. This triple-engine aircraft can transport both people and cargo. As of now, around 60 KC-10s are operational. The plane had its maiden flight in July 1980. Its first refueling job was with a C-5 Galaxy in October, and it officially entered service in March 1981. The 60th unit joined the fleet in November 1988. For refueling, the KC-10 has two methods, the boom system or a hose and drogue centerline setup. A boom operator situated at the rear of the cockpit uses an electronic fly-by-wire system to control the refueling process. A large window allows the operator to monitor the receiving aircraft. Using the boom method, the receiver can get fuel at a rate of 1,100 gallons per minute. The aircraft also features drogue air refueling pods and a hose at each wingtip. The receiving plane flies close and connects with a hose that's extended from the tanker. This hose and drogue system can transfer up to 470 gallons of fuel per minute. Safety features like an independent disconnect system and automatic load alleviation system are in place to make the process safer and more efficient. The KC-10 was designed to make global operations more accessible for the U.S. military by refueling both fighter jets and cargo planes. It can perform medical evacuations, accommodating patients in wheelchairs or on stretchers with specialized support pallets. Number 15. Boeing C-17 Globemaster III
On August 29th, 1981, McDonnell Douglas, which became part of Boeing in 1997, got the green light to develop a design for the U.S. Air Force's CX heavy cargo transport requirement. Although the plane wasn't fully operational until January 1995, it has played a role in revitalizing the USA's strategic airlift capability. The winning design was labeled the C-17A, later christened the Globemaster III. This aircraft maintains the traditional look of a military cargo plane, but incorporates modern upgrades like winglets, a supercritical wing design, and high-efficiency turbofans equipped with thrust reversers. The C-17 has the flexibility to operate at airports, previously off-limits to jet-powered cargo planes. Flight control is managed through a fly-by-wire system, and instead of the typical yoke, each pilot operates a control column. The C-17A prototype first took to the skies on September 15, 1991, after an earlier full-scale development plan had been abandoned. The plane started its service with the 17th Airlift Squadron at Charleston Air Force Base in South Carolina in June 1993. The C-17 faced a lot of pushback, causing orders to drop from 210 to 120 aircraft by 1991, and then to a low of just 40. However, after cost-cutting measures and demonstrated capabilities, the original order of 120 planes was reinstated for delivery by 2005. An additional 15 were ordered to assist U.S. Special Forces, and there was talk of acquiring another 45 standard airlifters for the U.S. Air Force. In 2001, the Royal Air Force's No. 99 Squadron also began leasing four C-17As. Other operators include Kuwait with two, Qatar with four, and the United Arab Emirates with six units. Number 14. AN-225 Maria The Antonov AN-225 Maria, meaning dream, was truly a one-of-a-kind transport aircraft. It held the record as the world's largest transport plane for 34 years. It was also the heaviest and longest airplane ever built. Created in the 1980s specifically for the Soviet space program, the AN-225 had a specialized role. The Soviet Union's high-tech Buran spaceship was constructed around Moscow, but its launch site, the Baikonur Cosmodrome, was about 2,100 kilometers away in Kazakhstan. Given the Buran's immense size, transporting it by road or rail wasn't feasible. The AN-225 was the Soviet answer to this logistical challenge, similar to the role the U.S. Boeing 747 shuttle carrier aircraft played. While still under construction, the AN-225 took its first flight in 1988 and set a staggering 110 world records during that journey. Known as the Cossack in the West, the sole operational AN-225 was destroyed in 2022 during Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Originally, two AN-225s were planned, but only one was ever completed. Work on the second airframe came to a halt in 2009 when it was between 70 and 60% complete. Finishing the job was estimated to cost millions, and there just wasn't enough demand to justify another behemoth like the AN-225. Number 13, Lockheed Martin C-130J Super Hercules. The Lockheed Martin C-130J Super Hercules isn't just any old military transport plane. It's a four-engine upgrade of the classic C-130 Hercules. So it's based on a real legend. As of March 2022, 500 C-130J units have been delivered to 26 operators across 22 countries. While it may look similar to the original Hercules from the outside, the inside tells a different story. It's packed with modern features like new Rolls-Royce AE 2100D3 turboprop engines, Dowdy R391 six-bladed composite scimitar propellers, digital avionics, and head-up displays for each pilot. It even requires fewer crew members. All these updates make the C-130J a step up from its predecessor, the C-130EH. Specifically, it boasts a 40% longer range, a 21% higher top speed, and takes off in a 41% shorter distance. One unique feature that came up late in the certification process is a black rubber dacing boot at the bottom of its vertical fin, setting it apart visually from earlier Hercules models. The Super Hercules is available in two lengths, standard and a stretched version. 
The plane can also be equipped with an enhanced cargo handling system. This feature includes a computerized load master's station that allows remote control of the underfloor winch and a flip floor system for versatile cargo handling. The US Air Force was the first to adopt this system, which enables quick roll switching, allowing the C-130J to be even more efficient in completing tasks. Number 12, Shanxi Y9. Back in 2001, China commenced work on a new tactical transport aircraft. They were looking to replace the aging Y-8 fleet, which were essentially copies of the Soviet AN-12. China had its sights set on creating something along the lines of the US C-130J Super Hercules, which we just took a look at. They even collaborated with the Ukrainian Antonov Design Bureau to revamp the fuselage and wings. The result was a more capable plane that could carry more cargo and fly greater distances. By 2010, the Y-9 had its maiden flight, and just two years later, it was adopted by the Chinese Air Force. Currently, the Shanxi Aircraft Corporation is mass-producing the Y-9 and its variations. Interestingly, only one Y-9 has made its way to Myanmar so far. The Y-9 can haul up to 25,000 kilograms of cargo, although it's been said it can also take off while overloaded with up to 30,000 kilograms. It has the flexibility to carry 106 passengers, 132 paratroopers, or 72 stretchers. It can also airdrop two ZLC-2000 airborne combat vehicles. Beyond that, it can hold a range of other military vehicles, like light trucks, cargo containers, and pallets. The cargo bay itself has a volume of 155 meters cubed and comes equipped with tie-down rings and rollers to make cargo handling easier. The plane also features a built-in ramp in the rear cargo door for even more convenience. Number 11, Embraer C390 Millennium. Embraer, a Brazilian aerospace company, is the brains and brawn behind the Embraer C390 Millennium. This medium-sized twin-engine military transport plane is the heaviest aircraft ever built by the company. The idea for this plane started to take shape in the mid-2000s. Initially, Embraer thought about creating a scaled-down version of their E-190 jetliner, aiming for something in the ballpark of the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. But they were keen on using jet engines instead of turboprops. Both the Brazilian government and the Brazilian Air Force threw their support behind the project. In May 2008, the government invested into the project's development. Come April 2009, Embraer landed a contract for two prototypes. By the 2011 Paris Air Show, Embraer revealed plans for a longer civilian freighter version of the plane. Collaborations quickly emerged with other aerospace companies like Boeing, NIR, and Ogma. Although a joint venture was announced in November 2019, it fizzled out in less than six months. Other key players involved in the project as subcontractors include Aero Vodochodi, Bay Systems, and Rockwell Collins. The first prototype took to the skies on February 3, 2015, and the first production model was handed over to the Brazilian Air Force on September 4, 2019. With a payload capacity of 26 tons, this versatile aircraft is equipped to handle both standard jobs like moving troops, VIPs and cargo, and specialized tasks such as air-to-air -air refueling. Number 10, Kawasaki C2. Created by Japan's Kawasaki Heavy Industries, the Kawasaki C2 is a cutting-edge, medium-range military transport aircraft. Tailored to suit the Japan Air Self-Defense Force, these planes represent a significant tech upgrade compared to their predecessors. Japan had a strong desire for a domestically made, medium-range transport plane, and that's how the C2 came into being. Several international options like the Lockheed Martin C-130J Super Hercules, Boeing C-17 Globemaster III, and Airbus A400M were considered, but none of them quite fit the bill for the JASDF. So, KHI began the XC2 project in 2001, which would eventually become the C2 that we know today. This aircraft is part of the broader CX and PX initiative launched by the Japan Defense Agency in 2007. Both the JASDF and the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force aimed to modernize their aging fleets of transport and patrol aircraft under this plan. What's fascinating about the C2 is how it shares a good number of components with Kawasaki's P1 Maritime Patrol aircraft. This isn't just a fun fact. It actually helps to bring down the costs across development, production, and maintenance. 
The C2 made its first flight in 2010, following several prototypes and evaluation stages. By 2016, the plane was fully up and running with the JASDF, indicating that it was more than ready to tackle a broad array of missions. Number 9. Airbus A400M Atlas The Airbus A400M Atlas is a European four-engine military transport aircraft. This one was built by Airbus Military, now known as Airbus Defense and Space. It was developed to replace aging planes like the Lockheed C-130 Hercules and the Transall C-160. With tactical agility and strategic reach, the A400M sits in the size sweet spot between the C-130 and the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III. Not only can it land on rough terrains, but it can also haul more than the C-130. With the right gear on board, it can do more than just move people. It can refuel other planes and also serve as an airborne medical facility. The A400M had its maiden flight on December 11, 2009 from Seville Airport in Spain. In the period between 2009 and 2010, the program came close to being scrapped due to developmental delays and ballooning costs. However, the countries that had invested in the aircraft chose to continue supporting it. By July 2011, eight countries had collectively placed orders for 174 A400Ms. The European Aviation Safety Agency granted its certification in March 2013, and by August of the same year, the French Air Force had received its first aircraft. A400Ms from France, Germany, and the UK were in action in Caribbean disaster relief efforts following Hurricane Irma. They delivered essentials like a Puma helicopter, food, and water. Moreover, they assisted in evacuating individuals caught in precarious situations. Number 8. Ilyushin IL-76 Meet the Ilyushin IL-76. This was an important plane from the Soviet era. This was Russia's inaugural four-engine heavy transport made to deliver military cargo to frontline bases in extreme environments. Taking its first flight back in 1971, the IL-76 was intended to succeed the AN-12, and it did so admirably, with a 50-ton carrying capacity compared to the AN-12's 20 tons by 1974. Production was in full swing, and the basic IL-76 model, known to NATO rather oddly as Candid A, it was solely meant for military applications. It saw extensive use during the Soviet war in Afghanistan, with over 800 units produced along with various custom models. As of 2021, Russia had about 112 of these, and notably in 2022, over 70 IL-76s were deployed to transport Russian peacekeepers to Kazakhstan. This aircraft is engineered for the heavy lifting, capable of transporting large machinery and vehicles to isolated airfields that aren't well maintained. It can manage short, unpaved runways and endure the harshest weather conditions Siberia and the Arctic can offer. With a 50-ton capacity, it can airdrop everything from supplies and cargo to vehicles. The aircraft can accommodate up to 140 soldiers or 125 paratroopers and can also serve as an airborne medical facility with room for around 110 injured troops and medical staff. Its robust and dependable frame has given birth to multiple versions. Some are fine-tuned for basic transport tasks, while others are indispensable for combat support. Number 7. Antonov AN-22 Ante In the early 1960s, the Soviet government tasks its aviation industry with crafting a cargo plane capable of carrying intercontinental ballistic missiles. The Antonov Design Bureau in Ukraine, known for its focus on cargo aircraft, was assigned to develop this new plane. Work kicked off in 1961 on what would later become the AN-22 Ante. One of the key design specs was that this plane had to be capable of taking off and landing on soft terrain. To meet its requirement, 12 wheels were installed in the midsection of the fuselage, six on each side. This type of landing gear arrangement had its merits, but posed a challenge for ground maneuvering since the weight distribution wasn't even. Specialized controls for each wheel allowed the AN-22 to operate from less than ideal airfields by 1965, the first prototype was ready for action. Named Ante, it made its public debut the same year at the Paris Les Bourget Air Show. To this day, there's no plane larger than the Ante. The AN-22 also proved invaluable for troop and supply movement in Afghanistan and other conflicts. Number 6. Airbus A330MRTT 
The Airbus A330 multi-role tanker transport is a dual-purpose military transport and refueling aircraft modeled after the civilian Airbus A330. Although the US Air Force had initially selected a version of the A330 MRTT called the EADS Northrop Grumman KC-45 for its tanker replacement program, that project was eventually put on hold. This plane is essentially a military adaptation of the A330 200 passenger aircraft. The A330 MRTT has the flexibility to be fitted with different refueling systems, depending on what's needed. When it comes to passenger configurations, the cabin can be modified to accommodate up to 380 people in a single class layout. This makes the A330 MRTT versatile for a variety of missions, ranging from moving a large number of troops to providing more luxurious seating for VIPs. Some of the layout options include 300 seats in a single class or 266 in a two class setup. Also, the A330 MRTT can be equipped for medical evacuation missions and can carry as many as 130 standard stretchers. The cargo space is also pretty flexible. It can handle standard commercial containers and pallets, as well as military, ISO, and NATO pallets. The plane can also carry large military equipment, thanks to its cargo door. It has a bulk area and two lower deck cargo compartments, just like the A330-200. Modifications to the cargo hold now allow it to carry up to eight military pallets alongside civilian unit load devices. Number five, Douglas C-47 Skytrain. The Douglas C-47 Skytrain, known as Dakota in the RAF, is a military transport aircraft developed from the Douglas DC-3 commercial airliner. It saw major use during World War II for various tasks like parachuting cargo, transporting troops, and towing gliders. The C-47 remained in active duty for many years with various military groups and was produced in far greater numbers than its counterpart, the Curtis C-46 Commando, despite the latter being larger and having more cargo capacity. Over 60 different versions of the C-47 have been produced, and the plane has served in the armed forces of around 100 countries. The C-47 differed from the civilian DC-3 in several key areas. It had a cargo door, a hoist attachment, and a reinforced floor. It also featured a shorter tail cone for towing gliders and an astrodome in the cabin's roof. During World War II, the C-47 and modified DC-3s were used for moving troops, delivering supplies, and evacuating the injured. The Oklahoma City plant churned out 5,354 C-47s from March 1943 to August 1945. Douglas Aircraft's Santa Monica facility also started producing a special variant, the C-53 Skytrooper, in October 1941. Unlike the C-47, this version didn't have a cargo door, a hoist attachment, or a reinforced floor. Because the C-47 was deemed more versatile, only 380 C-53s were made. Number 4. Antonov AN-70 The Antonov AN-70 is a next-generation medium-range transport aircraft originating from Ukraine. Development for this heavy lift, short takeoff, and landing plane kicked off in the early 90s, involving companies from both Russia and Ukraine. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the Antonov Design Bureau and numerous other military manufacturers faced financial struggles, which nearly led to the collapse of the AN-70 project. Despite these challenges, two prototypes were constructed, and the AN-70 made its maiden flight in 1994. This cargo plane was intended to succeed the aging AN-12, and in terms of performance and capabilities, it closely mirrors the Airbus A400M. There was even a period when the AN-70 was considered as a potential replacement for the A400M, which was facing its own issues. The aircraft is also seen as a significant competitor to the upgraded Russian IL-76MF. In 1999, during a test flight, the AN-70 and an accompanying AN-72 experienced a disastrous event. The AN-70 crashed and was completely destroyed, while the AN-72 managed an emergency landing. Tragically, the entire crew perished. Number 3. Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey The Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey is an American military aircraft and it's a standout due to a unique tilt rotor design. This allows it to perform both vertical takeoffs and landings and short takeoffs and landings. This need became clear in 1980 during the Iran hostage crisis. Operation Eagle Claw failed, 
and showed that regular helicopters and fixed-winged aircraft each had limitations for certain military tasks. To address this gap, the United States Department of Defense launched the Joint Service Vertical Takeoff Landing Experimental Program in 1981. The project's main goal was to plan out a totally new type of aircraft that had a lot of speed and could fly long distances. But it still needed the ability to take off vertically. In 1983, the development of the V-22 tilt rotor was awarded to a team formed by Bell Helicopter and Boeing Helicopters. This Bell Boeing team collaboratively worked on producing the aircraft. The V-22 Osprey had its maiden flight in 1989. After that, the testing phase began along with tweaks to the design. This was a long process, mainly because the V-22 was the first of its kind in military tilt rotor aircraft. Number 2. Boeing KC-46 Pegasus Boeing adapted its 767 jet airliner to create the Boeing KC-46 Pegasus, a U.S. military plane specialized for aerial refueling and strategic transport. The U.S. Air Force selected this tanker as the victor in the KC-X tanker competition back in February 2011. The plan is for it to take the place of the older Boeing KC-135 strato tankers. By January 2019, the first of these planes was handed over to the Air Force, which aims to acquire 179 Pegasus aircraft by 2027. The KC-46 Pegasus is a variant of the Boeing 767. It's a wide-body, low-wing monoplane that features a conventional tail assembly with a single fin and rudder. The aircraft employs a hydraulic flight control system and comes equipped with retractable tricycle landing gear. Powering the Pegasus are two Pratt & Whitney PW-462 engines, one located under each wing. Number 1. Alenia C-27J Spartan The Alenia C-27J Spartan is a military transport plane developed by Leonardo's Aircraft Division. The C-27J is essentially an upgraded version of an earlier plane, the Alenia Aeronautica G-222, also known as the C-27A Spartan in the U.S. The C-27J has been adapted for various missions. These range from maritime patrol and search and rescue to C-3 ISR tasks, which include command, control, communications, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. The plane can also be used for fire support, ground attacks, and electronic warfare. In the summer of 2011, the C-27J saw its first combat action. The U.S. Air Force deployed it in August of that year. At that time, two C-27Js manned by Air National Guard and Army National Guard crews began operations at Kandahar Airfield in Afghanistan. What's your favorite military transport? Do you think the future will bring even bigger designs? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.